As the pace of life grows busier, louder, and more insistent, we gather here to a quiet, holy spot where our hearts find rest as we stop to contemplate and meditate and hope. Suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth, goodwill to men. Can you imagine what life would be like if all people lived according to the blessing of the angels? If we all were to glorify God in everything we do, work together to ensure peace on earth, and always share goodwill with our fellow man. Our God prophet's candle of hope, and we light the angel's candle of peace. As we light this candle, we acknowledge that only our long-awaited Messiah can provide a peace that passes human understanding and gives our hearts rest. Take time this week to seek out that peace the angels wished for us so long ago. Almighty God, thank, thank you for the blessing of angels. May, May we hold your peace in our hearts as a rock upon which we can anchor our lives and find a sure footing in the midst of life's storms. You came to bring peace to all people, Jew and Gentile alike. Help us work to find peace, even with those who seem different than us. Keep us mindful of others, and make us brave to share your peace with a world that so desperately needs it. Amen. Blessed are you, holy and living one. Come to your people and set them free. with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and the hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? 
All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up on a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. (coughs) He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother's sheep. This is the word of the Lord. Let us read Psalm 85 by half verse. You have been gracious to your Lord, to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortunes of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people. And blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him. That his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth. And righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity. And our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
May the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So John the Baptist is best known as the forerunner of Jesus, the one who calls on people to prepare the way of the Lord's coming. He's the messenger, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. The forerunners are often unseen figures and unsung heroes, and their backstories are unknown. The details of their lives are underimagined or undervalued. They garner minimal attention because they're forerunners, those who plow the ground, destabilize the terrain, and make ready for change that is to come. They are not the one. They are those who come before the one. Every kind of movement needs people who function as the advanced team, that is, those who prepare the way for something beyond the present state of affairs. So in today's reading, we find John preparing the way for Jesus. And notice how Mark begins his gospel, the beginning, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. And notice that the beginning of the story about Jesus isn't about Jesus at all. It's about John. According to Mark, Jesus' story begins before Jesus has come on stage. When his cousin John is in the spotlight drawing crowds out to the River Jordan to confess their sins and be baptized, including, later on, Jesus himself. As Erica Lloyd from Seekers Church shares, in America, we love the gospel of the self-made man and the woman who came from nothing yet reached great heights. Their stories give credence to our claim to being the land of opportunity, where rugged individualism means anyone can succeed. But according to Mark, even Jesus' story starts with the one who came before him. John prepares the way for Jesus and in doing so reminds us that no one is self-made. None of us complete the work all on our own. This is important, I think, not only for the healthy dose of humility it provides, but also for the hope it brings. We're in this together. Those that came before us laid foundations for our work, and those that come after us will continue to build where we leave off. We need not despair that the work of the kingdom will go unfinished. John, like all martyrs, was killed by those who wanted to silence his message, but even now, over 2,000 years later, we hear his voice loud and clear. We know his story, know that it was part of Jesus' story, know it is part of our own story today. John, he appears as a wildly liminal figure, a character who lives and works in a threshold space, an in-between space. He dwells in the wilderness, he hangs out by a river, offers the ritual of baptism, and devotes himself to preparing a way for the one who is to come. His purpose is not only to make a path for Christ, but also to help others cross into a deeper relationship with God. John the Baptist has a way of holding the past, the present, and the future in dramatic and creative tension, not becoming overly attached to any one of these realms, open to the ways that the God of the ages is at work. John is able to recognize Christ when he comes. Most importantly, this John, this wilderness man, announces that change can happen, that repentance is possible, that God is doing something new, something unexpected. So Advent reminds us to keep awake, to be aware of what is right in front of us. Advent reminds us that Christ is present even in the darkness. Advent hope. Will we, like John, recognize Christ when he is right in front of us? So here's a story. Back when the telegraph was the fastest method of long-distance communication, a young man applied for a job as a Morse code operator. 
Answering an ad in the newspaper, he went to the office address that was listed. When he arrived, he entered a large, busy office filled with noise and clatter, including the sound of the telegraph in the background. A sign on the receptionist counter instructed job applicants to fill out a form and wait until they were summoned to enter the inner office. The young man filled out his form and sat down with the seven other applicants in the waiting area. After a few minutes, the young man stood up, crossed the room to the door of the inner office, and walked right in. Naturally, the other applicants perked up, wondering what was going on. They muttered among themselves that they hadn't heard any summons yet. They assumed that the young man who went into the office made a mistake and would be disqualified. Within a few minutes, however, the employer escorted the young man out of the office and said to the other applicants, gentlemen, thank you very much for coming, but the job has just been filled. The other applicants began grumbling to each other, and one spoke up saying, wait a minute, I don't understand. He was the last to come in. We never even got a chance to be interviewed, yet he got the job. It's not fair. And the employer said, sorry, but all the time that you've been sitting here, the telegraph has been ticking out the following message in Morse code. If you understand this message, then come right in. The job is yours. None of you heard it or understood it. This young man did, so the job is his. All of the applicants presumably knew Morse code, else they wouldn't have bothered applying for the job, right? But only one of them was awake to what he knew. All of us know Christ, but we sometimes tune him out and completely miss him, not recognizing the one who is standing right in front of us. So stay awake, and Advent blessings to all of you. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you're able, and let us profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In joy at the nearness of the Christ, let us offer our prayers to God, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. May the power of God's holy presence clear a path through the rubble of broken lives and hearts to make our world and all of us a new creation. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May our gracious God be always for us a shepherd to console and comfort us, to nourish all our deep hungers, and to make us live in peace forever. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May we come to find in the desert of our lives the gift of forgiveness and the waters of a new Jordan that bring cleansing refreshment. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
May the God of John the Baptist and our God continue to raise up holy prophets in our midst who will tell the good news of saving rescue for all people. For this, let us pray to the Lord. May the God who was our comfort hear the cries of all in need, especially for those listed who are near to our hearts and those we name silently or out loud. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who protect and serve, as well as their families, the police, the firefighters, emergency medical personnel, and those serving in the military, especially those listed here that are near to our hearts, and those we name silently or out loud. For this, let us pray to the Lord. For those in our parish family celebrating birthdays this week, Ann Lutz and William McWilliams. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the God who is our future in the gift of Jesus Christ hold us always in the embrace of faithful love and bring us to the new heaves and a new earth. For this, let us pray to the Lord. For those who will die this day, and for the beloved dead whom we have entrusted to you, especially for Barbara Thompson, for whom the altar flowers are given, that you will present to them, speaking your name in comfort and in power. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Recall us to our baptism, O Lord, and hear our cries for ourselves and for the whole world. For we pray in the name of the one who came, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you.
Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Got quiet really fast. <laughs> right. Are there announcements? Yes. Yes. Please. Okay. Yesterday, Trinity did proud again by presenting its annual breakfast <laughs> breakfast <laughs> with Santa. <laughs> and um, I, I thought it was very successful. There were a lot of uh, folks here. Santa was driving around town before, thanks to Coatesville police escorting him. And, uh, you know, I was standing in the buffet line and uh, listening to the comments, you know, of, of the, the other folks there. And everybody was raving about the food. And, you know, um, by the way, I, I did catch Santa before he was leaving. He was waiting for Rudolph to powder his nose. And uh, he, he asked me to pass on a couple of comments. Uh, number one, special thanks to Pat Kirkner for you know, her yeah. super job in putting together uh, the event. And uh, I, I know that there's an awful lot of folks that were on Pat's team you know, that, uh, that uh, deserve uh, applause and commendation, so many. You know, I couldn't uh, see them all, but there was a lot, a lot of folks there, and it was obvious uh, of the efforts. Uh, one thing Santa did tell me, though, and uh, I want to pass this on. He said, Dick, please, 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 don't invite Betty Sullivan again. <laughs> what did Betty, you do? <laughs> apparently, Betty was bringing a whole lot of the kids up to Santa. And, and she was sitting down in a chair and saying, OK, tell Santa what you want. And Betty started off by saying, Santa, uh, could you bring me a Ferrari? OK. So then, then she nudged the kid and said, tell Santa what you want. And this, apparently, this one little girl said, Santa, I would like a, a necklace. And Betty said, what kind, diamond or pearl? <laughs> and uh, this went on and on. And Santa said, this woman is breaking the bank. Please, please, don't invite her back. But uh, anyhow, Santa was, was really uh, tickled with the event. Um, he is uh, back north now, getting ready to uh, come back and visit us in a couple of weeks. But uh, he, he did ask uh, that uh, everyone be acknowledged for their efforts and thanks all the members of Trinity and uh, our neighbors in the community for making uh, the event uh, successful. So thanks all. Thank you. Two quick things. First of all, as much as Vic talks about Breakfast with Santa, I have never seen Vic there. Has anyone ever seen Vic at this event? <laughs> Um, secondly, this is just my reminder to those who are watching via live stream. Sorry, I didn't mean to hit the mic. Uh, if you could, I saw a few of you did kind of check in and just say, hey, this is so-and-so watching. Just help us by letting, you, letting us know who is watching. So just kind of give a quick comment in there. So thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Now that the parade is behind us and breakfast is behind us, you probably think you're done with me, but alas, you are not. <laughs> <laughs> we have a very nice concert happening this Friday, and we're going to have a reception Yay. afterwards, so I have a big favor to ask. I have nine of these that need appetizers put on them. Now, I'm a little bit of a control freak, so I have the plates <laughs> in the hall. And I have recipes attached to the plates because I like a good combination of savory and sweet stuff. So see me in the hall, even if you leave um, right after church, give me five minutes back there and I can, you can help donate that. Or I have four of these that need three dozen cookies on each one. So if you want to do cookies instead of an appetizer, see me. Thank you. <laughs> and again, the profit on yesterday was about $333. <laughs> That, that was made possible by the profound generosity of, of many of the parishioners who donated a lot of the foods and stuff, and um, excellent help, and it was pretty well coordinated, and I learned that you don't tell Betty Sullivan how to make scrambled eggs. <laughs> They're beating up on poor Betty. <laughs> Other announcements? <laughs> All right. So this Thursday at noon, our healing service continues uh, via Zoom. 
Of course, we have our Sounds of Christmas recital this Friday, starting at 6.30. <laughs> and um, if you want to come down a little bit earlier, this starts at 6.30. There are restaurants that'll be open and here in downtown Coatesville, some new ones, the Record Kitchen and Bar, Iron Eagle, the Made in Coatesville shops. The incubator shops are open starting at 4.30, I believe. Um, they're in the 200 block right here of uh, Lincoln Highway. So all within walking distance. So enjoy up and coming downtown Coatesville <laughs> on Friday evening. And let's see, there is, um, Dan Hinkle is leading, Reverend Dan Hinkle is leading a weekday Bible study. He has a sign-up sheet in the back. So if you are interested in participating, he's looking at 11.30 to 1, like over the lunch hour, a brown bag lunch. Uh, and Bible study, either Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, whatever works for most of the people that are interested. So if you want to sign up and let them know you're interested. And then our Christmas Eve candlelight service this year will be at 8 p.m. Um, it falls, Christmas Eve falls on a Sunday, so we won't have the morning service. We'll, we'll just have the candlelight service at 8 p.m. on Sunday, December 24th. That's it. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You have filled us and all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit, you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing.
Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. So we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. And on the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And as supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons that was Cyril, our patron saint, and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. Hallelujah, be known to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. Be known to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Our service continues with the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May he whose second coming in power and great glory we await make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia.